origami things. We're gonna start out a little easier and go all the way up to this really tricky one that takes a lot of paper. Um, so the supplies you're gonna need today for our projects are real simple, just paper. If you have paper that's already a square, that's all you'll need. If you're like me and your paper comes rectangle, you're gonna need also some scissors. So um, to make all of these projects here, you're gonna need one piece of paper for this one, one piece of paper for this one, one paper for this one, three for our box here, and nine for this guy over here. Um, so take a look at them, decide which ones you wanna make, or if you wanna make all of them, get the right paper. Um, first off, I'm gonna show you how to turn your rectangle paper into a square. It's pretty easy. You're gonna take one of the corners and you're gonna fold it across to the opposite side. You're not gonna fold it corner to corner. You're gonna fold it a little bit back from there. What you wanna do is make sure that these bottom edges line up and this corner point is where the crease is. So line up your paper and fold it like that. You're gonna to wanna to do this carefully because if you do it quick and, and your corners misaligned, then your paper's not gonna come out square. So your fold should look like this. You've got this triangle here and, and this sort of a trapezoid shape over there. So with your paper folded, all you're gonna do is cut along this line here. You're gonna end up with a square paper and sort of a bookmark shape. square paper and our bookmark shape. Now, you might be a little worried that your paper is kind of folding up on itself, but don't worry because all of these origami projects, they're gonna use a fold like that. So even if your paper has a crease, that's okay. But if you're worried about it, all you gotta do is do one of these, and then you've got a square you can use as a stencil on the rest of your paper if you'd rather not fold each one. Um, if you need a bookmark, this is great. But if you really like these origami projects and want to make them even trickier, you can do the same thing with this guy and get a very little square of paper so that you can make a really tiny piece of origami. So, if you're looking for a real challenge, you can make tiny origami with your little square papers that are the scraps from your bigger paper. Okay, we're gonna start with our bookmark here. You're gonna um, use one piece of paper for this. We're gonna fold it such that you can slip it on the corner of a page just like a bookmark. That's gonna be our easiest one. And then uh, after that, we'll do this cute little crane. He flaps his wings when you're done. After the crane, we'll do this cool box here. When you make it, it comes out flat and then you gotta blow it up so that it pops into 3D. We'll also make these three pieces here. You can make a box with a little divider and a lid. Uh, and then our last one will be this guy, a puzzle, um, with all these different pieces that you can link together. Um, but that is not all the origami projects that are out there. So if you are having a lot of fun with this and you really wanna make some more origami, you can get books from the library. We have a ton of origami books. They're in the 736 through 738, sorry, 736.982 section. Um, you're gonna go there, you can find all the origami books, but you know what? You don't even have to come in here to find them. All you have to do is go to our online catalog, type in origami, you'll see a bunch of different origami books. You can use your library card to put them on reserve and pick them up here with our curbside service. Um, just go online and, and you can find out how to do that. All right, so let's dive in with our first project. All right, here we are with our first origami project. We're gonna make this cute little bookmark. It's a, a nice triangle shape that's gonna help you um, keep your place in a book. You'll be able to stick it on the corner. So for this project, you're just gonna need one sheet of paper. Um, I've got a blue one here, but you can use any color you want. Now, if you have a paper that has one color on one side and a different color on the other side, you're gonna to wanna to put the pattern side down. The side that you want to show at the end is gonna be down on the table to start. 
My paper is the same color on both sides, so it doesn't matter for me. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the top of the paper and you're gonna fold it down to the bottom. You're gonna line up those edges and give it a crease right across the middle. Use your finger to make it a, a good line there. Okay, next, we're gonna unfold that. We're making a, like a, a line to help guide us. Next, we're gonna turn this into sort of a, like a plus shape. So we've got our line across. We're gonna do a line up and down. Same thing, take one side to the other, line up those edges and corners, and crease it. Then, open it back up. So you've got these plus lines here, um, one up, one across, and it's gonna help you mark the center of the paper. Where those lines cross, that's the center of your paper. So, we're gonna turn our paper a little bit so it's kind of in a diamond shape instead of a square. You're gonna take that top corner and you're gonna fold it down to that center point. So, your triangle shape here is gonna fill in that top square. All right, so, you've got your triangle folded. You're gonna do the same thing with the other one. And you're gonna have a like a kind of a shape that looks like an envelope open on both sides. All right, so you've got this shape. Your two corners are folded in, but the two corners on the side are out. You're gonna take the top and bring it down to the bottom. Line up those edges. And when you've got it lined up, give it a good crease across. Take a look, look, mine is not quite even, so I am gonna readjust it. There we go, that's much better. The nice thing with these origami projects is that it's all just folding, so you can undo it if you need to. All right, so you've got your little uh, kind of a boat shape. You've got two on the bottom, but your, your main fold is on the top. All right, you're gonna take one of these long corners and you're gonna, you see this line here? This diagonal line? You're gonna take it and you're gonna fold right on that line that's already made. So take that corner, fold it down. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now you've got another diamond shape. You've got like a, a split in the middle and You've got the folds on top, but kind of open edges on the bottom. Okay, so you've got this diamond shape. We're going to go wild and we're going to turn that design over. So you've got this like uh, sort of a pocket here now. And you're going to take these triangle points and you're going to fold them up. Give it a crease. And then we're going to unfold them. So basically what we did was we made a, a fold there along the center that's going to guide us when we tuck those points in. All right, we're almost done. The last step is the trickiest part. You need to see this triangle on top. You need to find where it opens. There's going to be one triangle, two triangles, and then your bigger flaps. You're going to take those triangle points and you're going to tuck them inside those two top triangles. There's one and here's the other one. And once you tuck them in, your bookmark's done. It'll stay just like that, and you can pop it on the corner of a, a book page. There you go, there's your bookmark. Okay, friends, here we are with our second project. We're gonna make this flapping crane here. As you can see, um, this one's pretty cool. So there's some, some motion element to it. Um, it, there's a, a little bit trickier folds in this one than in our last project of bookmarks, so, um, Follow along if you can. If you need to rewind and, and see a step again, go for it and um, let's get started. So for this project, you need one piece of paper. Um, if you have a paper that has different colors on the different sides, um, you're gonna wanna put the color that you want to see on the outside up to start. Uh, my paper is green on both sides, so if you have paper like mine, it doesn't matter because it'll be green either way. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our, our folds so that we've got a plus across this diamond here. Point to point and crease. 
Then you're gonna unfold it. You can turn it or go side to side. I'm gonna turn it. And point to point again. And unfold it. Okay, so now we've got our paper here and it's got like an X across it. We're gonna do the same sort of thing, but first we're gonna flip it over. Now, instead of doing our plus on the diagonals this way, we're gonna do our plus from the straight side to the straight side. So, first thing you're gonna do, top to bottom. And open it back up, and then side to side. Okay, so what you should have at this point is a paper with a plus and a cross. Uh, so you, you've got eight sections to your paper, eight triangles kind of together if you wanna look at it that way. Now this next fold is kind of tricky. So you've got your paper and, and you've got it folded in half one way. You're gonna take the top corner of one side and bring it to the top corner of the other side. Now, if you're um, a lefty and you wanna do it the other way, that's totally fine. It will work the same either way. So you bring that corner to the other side and you can, you can hold it down here and then pop that other corner in. So what you're gonna have in the end is a smaller square. You're gonna have an opening on the bottom that has all of these points in it all of these points, and then you're gonna have the top that is all the pieces stuck together. Okay, so you've got your opening on the bottom and it's all close together on the top. This next part is a little tricky. Um, it's, we're gonna take the corners to the center, but we're not gonna take them straight in. We're gonna take them so that this whole side is gonna line up with that center crease. So we can bring that side in and fold it down. There you go. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Bring that corner into that center fold. Okay. So, you've got these two little flaps here. You're going to leave them down. And what you're going to do is flip to the other side and do that same thing that we did. Okay. So now you've got a shape that looks like a kite and you've got these flaps here. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this top triangle here, we're gonna fold it down this way and then back up. We're gonna flip back over and do the same thing. We don't need this to stay folded, we just need to make a crease there so that when we do a fold later, it's ready to go. Okay, we're gonna open one side back up. So you've, you've got your uh, diamond shape again and remember how we had all those openings at the bottom you're going to take the top layer only leave all the other layers down just the top and this fold that we just made across here put your fingers there to hold the top triangle in place you're going to fold this guy all the way up so that it opens kind of like a mouth and those two diamonds on the side you're going to flatten them into triangles all right, so your whole thing will look like a diamond now. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You get another chance to see it. You're gonna open those two triangles. You're gonna put your fingers here to kind of guide your paper folding along that, that triangle that we made earlier. You're gonna grab just the top layer and you're gonna bring it up so it looks like a big mouth opening and you're gonna flatten those triangles down. Um, now you shouldn't need to make any new folds for this one. All those folds that we made at the beginning, those plus signs, um, they will really uh, help, help all the folds get in the right place. So um, we've got this diamond here. Same thing on both sides. Next, we need to make the head and the tail of our crane. So you can see this, this uh, shape, it kind of opens like a book. You can go either way with it. So one side, of these is gonna be our head and one side is gonna be the tail. You can decide which is, is which for you. I'm gonna have this side be the head. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open that like a page in a book a little bit. You'll see in here we've got that triangle still. 
And you're gonna pull this guy up. Go slowly, you don't wanna rip anything. So you're gonna pull this, this, um, this triangle shape up and you're not gonna pull it all the way up so that it matches it. You're gonna pull it most of the way so that when you fold the paper back down, that piece is sticking out to the side a little bit. Okay, now I told you this was gonna be my head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do that same kind of fold, but I'm gonna pop this little head down there. There we go, he's got a head now. All right, I'm gonna do the same kind of fold for the other side. I'm gonna open that up a bit, bring this piece up. Don't bring it all the way up so it matches there. Stick it out to the side and fold it down. Because this one's my tail, I'm not gonna make that head shape. I'm just gonna leave it sticking up. Okay, so now we have this flat crane and um, he's not flying yet. We need to do a little work to get him ready to fly. One of the first things you should be doing is this, um, this side of his wing along his head, you're gonna pinch with your fingernails, make sure it's creased really good and kind of angle it out to the side. Give it a little bit of an arc. Do that on both sides. Okay, so we've got that. Now the back side of his wing, we wanna curve that forwards a little bit too. So you can just use your thumb, give it a little roll, don't need to make any creases here, um, but uh, if you give it a little roll, then um, when you go to make him fly later, the wings are gonna have a, an idea of where they should be going. Okay, so we did that and we've got our wings. They're kind of sticking out a little bit now. All you gotta do to make him fly is pull on his tail. You're gonna go slow at first. If you just go and yank it, you're gonna rip that crane right in half. Um, so you gotta go slow, kind of train him, get ready to fly and then once his wings know where to go, they've kind of got that path all set, you're good to go. All right, so there's our crane. All right, here we are on our third project. Next up, we're gonna make this, this cute little box. Uh, you can't open it or put anything in it, but it's pretty cool how um, it starts out flat and then pops up into this 3D box shape. So for this project, you're gonna need one piece of paper. If you have a paper with a design on it or if you have just a plain paper you've colored a design on one side, you're going to want to start with your color or design side up. My paper is the same on both sides so I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make some guidelines like we've been doing on our other projects. We're going to make our plus shape um, straight edge to straight edge, straight edge to straight edge. Okay, now we need to make some diagonals. So we're gonna turn our paper just a little bit and fold point to point. All right, now if you did our crane project, you know that there's um, you know, kind of a tricky fold that we gotta pop the sides in. This is another one of those, but it's gonna look a little different in the end. You can see once you've got it here, um, you've got this sort of a triangle area, another one up here, and this diamond shape here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold this triangle area together. You're gonna take this point and bring it over to match this one. So this part here is gonna be folded down. Then you're gonna pop this other side in so that you've got a matching set. And there you go, you've got your triangle. Okay, next up, we're going to take this, um, this triangle edge piece here and we're going to fold it all the way up to the top. Okay, now we need to uh, make like a, a little guiding fold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this top corner and bring it down into the middle. So what you've got is this sort of a triangle look here, but then we're gonna open it back up. We're gonna do another fold. We're gonna bring this outside corner of the triangle into the middle. Now remember we just folded that down. That's marking where the center of this triangle is. So now we know to bring this outside right into where that fold is in the middle. 
That's helping us get it even across the top and the bottom. Okay, so we've got this sort of a, a triangle shape over top and we've got this little flap that's up here. What we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to fold this triangle down to that center point as well. And then we're gonna fold it across along where this triangle is. And then unfold it. Now, in this triangle here, we've got a pocket. What we need to do is take that triangle flap we just made and tuck it into that pocket. That's gonna be what holds our box together. A little tricky to get it in there, but that's how you know it's gonna stay. All right, we got the flap in the pocket. We're gonna do that same thing on all of our other triangle corners. Okay, so we did that same thing, put that triangle in the pocket on all four sides. We're almost done. Um, you're gonna see with your box here, um, you can kind of got like these four things, you can turn the pages if you want, um, sort of a crystal shape. You're gonna notice on one end, um, you know, it's plugged up. That is, that is a complete piece of paper. But on the other end, you've got this little hole. That's where all of those pieces of paper that you folded earlier, that's where their edges are coming together. And um, what we can do to get this box to pop into 3D, we're gonna blow into that hole. But before we can do that, we need to make sure all of the creases are ready to go um, so that our box can turn, turn 3D. So you notice we've got these sides, they're already creased, but uh, we need more sides to turn it into a box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these triangle pieces, fold it up to the top, give it a good crease. There's a lot of layers there, so you're gonna wanna give it an extra good crease. Flip it over and fold it the other way. Um, we're not gonna leave these folds, they're just to help guide the box when we pop it up. You're gonna do the same thing on the top. There's even more layers here, so make sure to give it a good crease. And flip it over, do the same thing. Okay, so now your box has all these lines everywhere and it's ready for the final step. We gotta blow it up. So you're gonna blow some air into that hole. You gotta use a good amount of water or um, air pressure. <laughs> and, um, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you, you don't put your mouth on it too much because um, you'll, you'll get the paper a little soggy. So it's a kind of a fine balance between blowing hard enough to blow up the box, but uh, keeping your mouth far enough away to, to keep your paper not soggy. So give it a go. Um, you might need a few tries to get it to blow up, but I think you can do it. There you go. We've got a nice box. Um, if your box came out a little bit rounded on any of the corners, like, like this one's not very sharp, you can go back, give it a little, little extra crease, um, help your box look nice and sharp. There you go, we got the paper blow up box. Ready to go. Okay friends, our next project is to make this cute little paper box. It's got a little insert that's optional if you want just like a, a box for some bigger stuff, you can go ahead and do that. Um, we'll also show you how to make this cute little insert. So if you wanna put littler things or have multiple things in there, you can have it divided. The box even has a lid. So for this project, you're gonna need three pieces of paper. I have two different colors, but you can do three of the same color. You can do uh, one of three different colors. You can do just like I am, two of one color and one of the other. So what I'm gonna do for my box is I'm gonna use these papers for the bottom and the top, and I'm gonna use this one for the insert. So I'm gonna put the blue aside for now because we're gonna do that insert last. I'm gonna put one of these aside because we're gonna work on the pieces of the box one at a time. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build the bottom of the box. Now, um, if your paper has a, like a colored side or a fancy side and a, a blank side, you're gonna to wanna to put the design side up. 
to start. Uh, mine, I don't know if you can see, it has, you know, kind of the same design on both sides, but it's a little brighter on this side. So I'm gonna have this side up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, you guessed it, make a lot of guiding lines. So first we're gonna do our, our regular plus lines, top to bottom and side to side. Okay, we're gonna flip our paper over and we're gonna do corner to corner. Okay, there we go. So you, you can see here that we've got a plus and a cross on our paper. Um, so we've got some guiding lines, we're ready to go. Um, we're gonna start out by taking each corner and bringing it into the center. All of those guiding lines are helping you know where the center is, right where they cross. That is the center of our paper. So we're gonna bring each corner into the center. Okay, so uh, you've got your, your big square with all the corners in is now a littler square. We're gonna flip our paper so that all those points are on the top side, but we're gonna fold it kind of down. So uh, this is the folds that we've usually been doing where you fold it so the paper goes one over the other. That's called the valley fold because it makes a dip like a valley. But for this one, we're gonna use a mountain fold. We're gonna fold the paper over the outside so that the fold comes up instead of going down, up like a mountain. Okay, so you've got your your rectangle here with one triangle kind of sticking up. Uh, leave it folded. What you're gonna do is take this bottom edge and you're gonna bring it up to the top and give it a good crease. You're getting a few layers here, so you might need to uh, help the edges lay flat. There we go. Okay, now flip it over, do the same thing. Okay, now those steps, we're gonna undo them. You've got your box here, and you can see we've kind of got like this accordion shape. We need to make that accordion shape in the other direction. So we're gonna do the same thing. Remember, we mountain folded, so we still have our triangles on top, and then we brought the bottom side up to that center fold. Okay, we're gonna unfold that again. You can see what that did for us. It made sort of like this grid of folds on our paper. Um, we've got all these little squares um, all the way across and through the middle. So now with all of those squares, what we're gonna do is unfold two of the corners. We've got sort of this crystal shape. We've got two opposite corners in, two opposite corners out. And you're gonna bring one of the sides up. You're not gonna fold it all the way over because remember, we're making a box. This is one of the sides of our box. So, we're gonna do that with one paper and we're gonna do it with the other one. Now, we need to bring the other sides up. What you're gonna do, remember that grid full of folds we made? They are gonna help you here. They're gonna guide your paper where it needs to go. So, you've got your sides up, you're gonna take your corner, bring it up and into the center. There it goes. It's a little tricky because you have to get the paper to go just the right way so that it will stay. But once you get it, maybe something that can help you, uh, you can see this diagonal here where the paper comes out. You're gonna kind of pop that in when you bring the paper side up. Sometimes it doesn't want to listen, it wants to go out, but just keep giving it a few tries. Eventually, it will fold in the right way. Okay, there we go, we've got the bottom of our box. Now, uh, usually if you, if you fold it nice and precisely, all those pieces, they'll just stay right there, but if you're having trouble uh, getting them to stay down, you can always put a little piece of tape or some glue in there to help it out, but um, for the most part, it should stay. Now, the top, of the box is gonna be 
pretty much just like that. We're gonna go through all those steps again. The only thing is, for our top, we need it to be a little bit bigger than the bottom so that it will fit over top. So, when we fold our corners into the middle, we're gonna fold them not all the way into the middle. Um, we're gonna leave a little extra space. So, go for it, get all your uh, guiding lines in there. All right, so here we are, we've got our, our plus and our cross. We need to bring the corners into the center, but remember, we want this lid to be a little bit bigger than the bottom. So you can see right here is the center where all those uh, folds come together, but I'm gonna fold just a little bit outside of that. If you want, you can get a ruler and, and kind of measure it, but um, you see here, uh, that's about how far from the edge that I um, have folded that. So you're gonna do that with each corner. Try to bring it about the same amount. If you wanna be really exact, you can get your ruler out. I'm usually pretty good at eyeballing it. Okay, so when you have your, um, your corners folded in, you're gonna notice that we don't have these nice points on the bottom or the, um, or the corners of our, our square anymore. They're these little uh, sort of lines. Um, that doesn't matter though, because remember we fold it all you know, a little bit more. Those will be inside of our box and um, it won't make our box misshapen. Our box will still have nice, um, nice strong squares, uh, corners. So um, the rest of this is just the same as the bottom of the box. So um, do all the same things you did on the other one and uh, we'll put the top and the bottom together. All right, now, our, our bottom of the box, it was staying together pretty good, but remember, we have this little extra space in there because we needed our top to be bigger. So to help them stay in, I'm gonna go along the edges, give them an extra really good crease. That's gonna help my top pieces stay in the box there. And if you're struggling with it again, you can just pop a little piece of tape in there, no problem. Okay, so we've got our bottom and our top, and remember, we had that little difference in, in the amount we were folding, so there's a bit of a difference in size, and your top should fit right on your bottom. There we go. All right, now, uh, if you want just a top and a bottom, your box is ready to go, but I'm gonna show you how to make a divider in case you want. Um, so we'll set those aside for a minute because they're ready to go. We just need the divider to go inside. I'm making mine with a different kind of paper so we can get this contrast like this, but if you want the same paper, that's totally fine. If you have a paper with a design on it, you're gonna wanna start with the design side up. Okay, we're gonna do, once again, all of those guiding folds. Corner to corner. Then you're gonna flip the paper over, and we're gonna do the top to bottom, side to side way. Okay, we need one more guiding fold on this one, and this one is tricky. You'll be really great at it if you folded a lot of letters, um, but if you haven't, you might need to do some practice with this one. We need this paper to be folded in thirds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of take one side, guess about where a third might be, but don't crease it down yet. You're gonna take the other side, kind of wrap it up sort of like a burrito shape, and you're gonna take a look at the edge. Now, uh, is your outside edge kinda at the edge where that crease would be if you folded it? And is that inside edge, is that near the fold there? Um, so if you think you've got it lined up pretty good, flatten those creases down. If it's off, just adjust it before you fold. 
Okay, I think I have mine pretty good, so I'm gonna crease those folds down. One thing you can do is that you can, you know, start one crease on one side, then open it up and make sure that this paper is lined up edge to edge there. That will help you get your fold straight all the way down. As you can see, I went a little, a little crooked because I, I didn't have it lined up exactly straight there. Okay, got that fixed. And then you'll just bring that other side over, line it up with the edge, crease it down, do that same method, make sure that edge is lined up before you go all the way across. There we go. So, I've got mine in thirds. Um, if you didn't get it, you know, exactly where you want it, just unfold it and give it another try. That's the nice thing about these projects. You're not cutting anything, so um, you can just undo it if you need to. Okay, so we've got our paper with all these guiding lines on it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our corners in, but we're not gonna bring them all the way to center like we did with that box. Instead, these lines where we did a third, you can see these lines are crossing our diagonals. We're gonna bring these corner points in so that they hit right where those two guiding lines cross. You're gonna do that on all four corners. Okay, we've got our corners in. The next thing we're gonna do Kind of looks like a stop sign here. You're gonna bring these um, these straight across and up and down edges of your stop sign. You're gonna bring them down in so they match with those points. So these corners here and here are gonna match up with these points here. We're gonna do that on all the edges. Okay, this is a good point to, to stop and kind of assess where you are. How are your corners coming up? Are they nice and close together or do you have some big gaps? If you've got big gaps between your um, corners here, you're gonna wanna unfold and give it another try. Um, sometimes it's really hard to get those thirds just right. Um, so if you're having trouble with things lining up, just unfold it, start over, give it another try. Once you've got it lined up, kind of kind of like a nice picture frame here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, fold in half diagonally, but usually, you know, we've been folding uh, in like a valley. This one is gonna be one of those mountain folds. So you're gonna take your corners and fold it up like this. Okay, we've got another one of those wild and crazy squash folds. They are sometimes tricky. You might need a few tries with it. If you remember, um, this is gonna be the same squash fold we did on the box. So you've got this kind of a triangle here. Put your hand down to hold it tight. And this corner on the side, you're gonna bring it out to the far corner that you're holding down. Give it a good crease down that middle there. There's a guiding line there. And then you're gonna pop this side in. Oh, wants to pop back out on mine. There we go. Come on, there it goes. And you've got a sort of a party hat shape, I guess you could say. Um, so once you've got that down, you might need a few tries on that one. Um, you're gonna take the top here. You can see there's a line where we're kind of like the brim of your hat might be. You're gonna take this top triangle and you're going to fold it along that line. It's going to come down right to the center and you're going to leave it there. It doesn't matter if you did it to this side or the other side, just one side is totally fine. Okay, so you've got that triangle down. This is a very tricky part. You can see here we've got this sort of a boat shape. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to use your finger, hold that bottom piece down um, and then Pinch this top part where that triangle is and bring it open. It's gonna open up kind of like a flower. Um, once you've got it looking like this, kind of looks like maybe a, a mouth talking to you, 
Um, you're gonna have it open. Remember those mountain folds where you're gonna fold the edges down so the middle comes up like a mountain? We're gonna do that right here along the center. We're gonna go fold it like a mountain. This is a tricky one. On the first time I did this project, it took me maybe six tries to get it right. So um, if it takes you a few tries, don't worry. It's very tricky to get it right. So we've got our, our sort of a plus shape here and these points coming down. Well, that is not gonna fit in our box, is it? That is just gonna stick up. What we need to do is flatten these points into corners. So you can see all those guiding lines that we made at the beginning, they're still there. We're gonna fold along those, fold them out, and bring that corner down flat. You're gonna do that on all the corners. Use those guiding lines to kind of flatten your corners down. All right, and if you need to, you can pinch the sides and bring them back in, kind of like a fortune teller. Give these top pieces a really good crease. You're gonna notice that one of them is thicker than the others. Remember that triangle that we folded down? That's where that is, so that's gonna stick out a little bit more. Give that one an extra good crease because that has more layers of paper than the rest. Okay, so we've got all those creased. We've got our points down. If yours is looking a little wonky, this is a good time to, to readjust um, wherever you might need to. Um, all you're gonna do now is take this thing, this plus looking thing, and slip it right into the bottom of your box. Um, if yours is popping up like mine is, um, a good thing you can do on the bottom here where you've got these um, triangle folds, just kind of crease them the other way. Right now, what they're doing in my box is they're kind of pushing down and, and pushing this divider up. That might not happen on yours, um, but if it does, just take the divider back out and kind of give them a little mountain fold so that they want to stick up a little more than down. Try it again. See if it's jumping out or if it stays in. Mine's staying in. If you're still having trouble, just glue it down, tape it down, no worries. And you've got your cute little box. Hi everyone, here we are on our last project of the day. We're gonna make this, um, this origami wreath or water wheel, whatever you think it looks like. It's a lot of fun. It's, um, if you like puzzles, this is a good one to make. So you're gonna need a lot of paper for this one. You're gonna need nine sheets of paper to make this project. You're gonna need one piece of paper to make a template to help you fold. Doesn't matter what color this paper is because it's not going to end up in your project. I'm going to use the blue one so it contrasts well so you can see what I'm doing on the other ones. And then you're going to need eight pieces of paper for all of these, um, these wreath pieces. I used two colors for this project here um, so I could do, you know, alternating one and then the other. If you want to do them all the same color, that's fine. If you want to do, you know, four different colors and, and four more, uh, that's fine. If you want to do eight different colors, whatever kind of pattern you want to come up with, you could do the whole rainbow in there. Okay, so to get started, we're going to need to make a template for that puzzle. So you're going to start out with one piece of paper here and we're going to fold top to bottom, but we're not going to crease it all the way. We're just going to make a little pinch mark on the side. That's gonna give us a little um, reminder of where the center is, but um, we don't need a fold all the way across the center. So um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the bottom edge and we're gonna bring it up to that pinch mark. And this is where we're gonna crease all the way across. You can check to make sure your fold was straight. Um, if the edges on both sides line up, then you got it straight. If they did not line up, unfold it and give it another try. Okay, so we've got that mark there. We're gonna unfold the paper. Now, we need to fold this bottom corner up to that line. And we need to fold this top corner down to that same line. And then 
we are just going to fold that bottom edge back. So we've got this um, kind of goofy looking shape here. Um, it's just going to help us line up all of the um, pieces for the wreath right while we're folding. Um, this won't be part of the wreath, but we're going to use it for each piece to help guide us. So next up, you're going to get your wreath paper out. And you're going to turn this guy around so that this flap here is at the top. You're going to take your, um, your paper for your piece. Um, if you have a side with a pattern that you're going to want showing in the end, you'll put that on the bottom. So you're going to slide your paper in so that it is all the way in that crease. Bring this guy down and then bring the bottom edge of your paper so it lines up with that top part. There we go. And unfold it. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Slide that in, bring the bottom to that template. And unfold it. Okay, great job. We can put that template aside. Don't get rid of it because you're going to need to do this seven more times. So we're going to Turn our paper 90 degrees. You can see we've got this little strip down the middle and two wider strips on the side. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the top corner, bring it down so that it lines up with that crease. We're going to do that on both top corners. Okay, and then you're going to take this bottom edge and you're going to bring it up so that it's touching the bottoms of these corners. You're making kind of like a house shape. If you need help lining things up, remember we made these folds down the middle. When you bring your bottom edge up, you can line that fold there up with that corner piece. That'll help you get things lined up, or you can also check the edges there. Okay, so you folded that up once. You're going to fold it up again. Same thing. Bring that the bottom edge, which is now a fold, up to those corners that we folded in. And give it a crease. I want to go a little crooked here, so I'm going to adjust. Now you're going to unfold all of that. So you've got these strips on your paper here. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring, let's just jump up here. Okay, we're going to bring this bottom edge up to this first fold and we're going to give it a crease. For me, I find it helpful to bring those two folds in so they line up with the fold further up, crease the middle, and then work on each side separately. Um, if you've got a different method that works for you to get that fold straight across, go for it. Okay, so we've got that fold up. Now, remember all these other folds that we made? We're gonna go with the topmost one. We're gonna fold it back up and flip it over. You're going to take these top corners that are sticking out and you're going to fold them down along the edge so you get this nice, uh, nice long diagonal line. Do that on both of them. Okay, now we're going to fold the bottom up. Remember all those creases we made on the other side? They're going to guide you here. You shouldn't need to make a, a new fold. The paper should tell you where it's already bent. Fold that up. You've got kind of a hat shape here. We're almost done with the piece, actually. Um, remember those lines we made down the center of the paper earlier? We're going to do a mountain fold here on them. There's that one. And there's that one. You're not making a new fold there. You're just 
bringing an old fold that you made back to life. Okay, so you've got this shape that looks like kind of like a, a goose head maybe. Um, you're gonna need to make seven more of these. So go ahead, rewind the video if you need to. Um, pause here, make seven more, and then we'll show you how to put them all together. Okay, so now you've got eight puzzle pieces folded. We've got here four of one color and four of another color. If you did eight different colors or just one color, that's fine. As long as you've got eight pieces, you're ready to go. So you're gonna pick one piece to start with. Um, if you're doing an every other color pattern like I am, doesn't matter which one. Um, you're gonna just take a piece to start with. And remember how I said that you need to make sure you've got this little triangle pocket and this um, banner edge. That's where we're gonna connect all the pieces. So I'm gonna take my one to start with and then I'm gonna take one to plug into it. Now, you're gonna need to make sure they're facing the same direction. Uh, if you're thinking of this as like a goose head, you want the beaks pointing in the same direction. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take this tab on the one in front of the beak and you're gonna slide it in that triangle pocket and underneath that banner edge and you're going to slide it until these triangle bits line up. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. All right and then we're going to keep going around our circle alternating every other color. Um, we'll put it together and then you'll have a wreath in the end. Okay, here we are getting close to the end. You can see my pieces are kind of crashing. When you get to this point, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to keep those tabs to the outside. All right, I got one more piece to put in here and then our puzzle will be complete. So you're gonna line up that last piece the same direction you've got all the other pieces and you're gonna kinda of sneak its nose in there where that space is. And you're gonna maybe need to hold back that flap so you can see what you're doing and tuck that piece into the pocket. This is the trickiest part because there's so many papers so close together. So if you need a little help, maybe you got a, a sibling, a parent, a friend who can, who can help you hold and tuck a piece. Okay, so I got those purple tabs in. Now I'm gonna tuck the marble tabs in. And after I get that in, we'll just do a little adjusting and we'll be good to go. All right, so I'm just gonna adjust a little bit so that all those triangle pieces on the inside line up, looks nice and even. Gonna check both sides, make sure all the tabs are all the way in place. And there you go, you got your wreath, nice job. all of our origami projects. We hope you had a lot of fun and we hope that you'll post a picture of what you made in the comment section here so everybody can see what an awesome job you did. Um, once again, we made our cute little bookmark. We got our crane. I hope yours is flashing. And uh, we've got a, a nice little box that you can't put anything in, but it stays up on its own. And then we've got this other box that you can put things in, plus our wild puzzle shape. So if you made one of them or made them all, show us a picture. And uh, if you made something that we didn't do here today, you can show us that too. Once again, if you're looking for more origami projects, you can go search origami in our online catalog, find some books you want, use your library card to reserve them and pick them up in our curbside service. You can also check out the 736 to 736.982 section of the library. Have a great day, bye.